Hi guys, and welcome to the video on the area and perimeter of triangles. So in this video, guys, we're going to go over the formulas for calculating area perimeter of triangles and then just doing a couple of examples so you kind of get the hang of what we're trying to do here. Um, because triangles are a common structural shape for engineering and fencing them and covering them requires area and perimeter. And uh, you're going to calculate these with 80% accuracy, so 8 out of 10 times if you are doing this correctly. So, remember, to calculate the perimeter of a triangle, you're going to add up the three sides. Um, if it's regular, meaning equilateral, you can multiply one side by three. So, for the area of a triangle, you must use, use the following formula. The area equals the base times the height divided by two. And so, when I say height, I mean this side, that height, has to actually form a 90 degree angle with the base, which leads me to the following saying, no 90, no good. If the side that you are using as your height doesn't make a 90 degree angle with the base, then it is no good. It is not the actual height of the triangle. So make sure that the base actually is perpendicular to the height before you do your calculations. So the actual height is called an altitude, um, extends from one vertex of a triangle to another side at a 90 degree angle, as you can see the base. If, you're, if the triangle does not have two exterior sides that form a 90 degree angle, then you must make sure that your height is an alt altitude. It must extend from one vertex to the other side at a 90 degree angle. But sometimes it is possible that the altitude actually has to be outside of the triangle, like in this one. The altitude actually has to be outside of the original triangle because otherwise we don't actually have any way to make 90 degrees with the base. Um, so here um, we have those gray segments represent fictional sides. Um, they're imaginary, but they can still be used for the calculations of using altitude to actually um, calculate the height of the triangle. And then you can use the red base here so this is still the base down here this section is and then you would do this base this altitude in order to actually calculate the area of the triangle so if you are missing a height because none of the sides form 90 degree angles with each other or is there there is no altitude measured you can calculate it in order to find the area of the triangle um, you can calculate it in a variety of ways. You can either use trigonometry if you know an angle, or you can use the Pythagorean theorem. Since a 90 degree angle is involved, it makes a right triangle, and that allows you to use Pythagorean theorem to calculate one of the missing sides. And so um, one of the most important things that we will be doing is area and perimeter in the coordinate plane. Um, Lots of times the problems that show up on the ACT are area and perimeter of figures on a coordinate plane. Um, you can either use the distance formula to find missing uh, heights here. So like right now, if I wanted to find the height of this triangle, what I would need to do is go from this point here all the way up to here and all the way over. I would actually need to calculate this length here as the height of the triangle. And that um, could be calculated using the Pythagorean theorem, or um, I could use um, uh, the distance formula as I see it. The other thing that I can do uh, and need to use that for is if I'm going to calculate the perimeter of something in the coordinate plane, um, it's easy for me to count squares. Like here, like I can tell that this side is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in length. But I can't count this side here. In order to calculate it, in order to actually figure out its actual length, um, we're going to need to we're going to need to use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate this length here. We'll call it x, and this length here, call it y. Um, you can count squares to count the actual sides, um, but you would need those for your area and your perimeter. Um, in this case, guys, um, because we're dealing with area and perimeter, we can go ahead and actually use decimals. So I'm going to specifically allow you to use decimals. And for your decimal measurements, okay, um, you're going to round it to the nearest tenth. The 
nearest tenth. And a tenth would be like 6.2. That's at the tenth. So you're going to be using the hundredth spot to round. And so that's all the precursor information we need here, guys. So let's just jump right into some examples. So calculate the area and the perimeter of the triangle below. So uh, the two sides here, 22 and 21, form a 90 degree angle. So I can use 21 as the base, since that is what the triangle is sitting on. And I can use 22 as the height. So to calculate the perimeter, I'm going to start with perimeter. I'm just going to do 21 plus 22 plus 30. Um, and I'm going to put my unit on at the end. Um, and when I add those all together, I get 43 plus 30 is 73. So 73 feet. And then to calculate the area, I need to use that formula of base times height divided by 2. So I'm going to substitute what I know here. A is equal to 21 times 22 divided by 2. So multiplying 21 by 22 gives me 462. So on the top, I get 462. And on the bottom, I still have the divided by 2. So the area would be, when I divide by 2, 231 feet squared. Now remember that the area is always squared, OK? Um, because we need. Uh, we are multiplying feet by feet. So the area here, uh, a foot measurement times a foot measurement makes foot squared, feet squared. So remember that area is always squared. So we're going to go ahead and then translate that. That was our basic triangle problem. We're going to go ahead and translate doing area and perimeter onto the coordinate plane. Um, again, because we see that the majority of problems that you're going to be faced with is you've got a coordinate plane and you're asked to do the same thing. So let's go ahead and uh, go and start making or finding the measurements of these sides using the coordinate plane. So I can tell that this has one, two, three, four, five, six. This side here has a length of six. This side here has a length of five. And I can totally calculate those because they are um, directly either horizontal, like the side length of five, or vertical, the side length of six. And when they are like that, um, you're totally allowed to just make those measurements by counting squares. It's when the um, measurements are diagonal like this that you have to use the Pythagorean theorem. So um, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate this measurement here. So that measurement there would be five squared plus 6 squared equals c squared. And it is c squared because it is a diagonal segment. So 5 squared is 25. 6 squared is 36. So and that's equal to c squared. Um, we get 61 equals c squared. And then um, just remember that the undoing of both sides is taking the square root. So c equals the square root of 61. So again, guys, decimals are going to be OK here. Um, we're going to use one decimal place, a tenth. So the side C is 7.8. So 7.8 is the last side. Um, and on a coordinate plane, OK, um, I, I, I'm looking for a unit here. On a coordinate plane, coordinate planes use units, unless you are specifically told otherwise. So right now. I can now calculate the, the perimeter of this triangle to be the 6 plus the 5 plus the 7.8. So the perimeter would be 6 plus 5 is 11 plus 7.8 is 18.8 .8 units. And I can't say uh, anything besides units because it's a coordinate plane. Um, and so now the area, um, the two sides here, I have one side that is the base of 5 height of 6. And I know that it's an actual height because those two sides make a 90 degree angle there. When a vertical line and a horizontal line touch each other, they intersect, they automatically make a 90 degree angle on a coordinate plane. So that's really nice for us. Um, so the area then in this case is going to be 
um, 30 divided by 2, which gives us an area of 15 units squared. So because remember that area is always units squared. And moving on, um, calculate the area and the perimeter of the triangle below. So right now, I don't have any sides that I can see that form uh, 90 degrees with each other, external sides. So what I can do is go ahead and I can see that inside of the triangle here, this length that I just made with a dotted with a dot dash line does in fact span a distance from the point of the triangle to the base, top point of the triangle to the base at a 90 degree angle. So I can go ahead and count those squares. So I am going to count that this triangle has a height of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 again. And uh, this base here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the base is 7. So I do have those key measurements, and I'm just going to calculate the area right away. Uh, area is equal to 7 times 6 over 2. So the area is equal to 42 over 2. Or the area is equal to 21 units squared. Because again, all units, all area is units squared. But the problem comes now in that I need these diagonal lengths in order to actually calculate the perimeter. In order to get them, I need to use Pythagorean theorem. And what I am going to do is I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem for this right triangle in here. And so this 7 is no longer the, un the units from here to here, like this. Instead, I have a length of 6. And I also have a height of 6. So now I can go ahead and calculate this segment here by doing 6 squared plus 6 squared. So for this length here, we'll do 6 squared plus 6 squared equals C squared. So we get 36 plus 36 equals C squared or 72 equals C squared. And so if you take the square root of 72, um, you're going to get approximately um, 8.5 as a decimal for C. Okay, so that tells me that that side length there is 8.5. So I'm going to erase my heavy dark markings here because now I'm going to go back and have to do the Pythagorean theorem a second time. So the 6, I'm going to remove it for clarity's sake. I need to do this triangle here, where this is now the side that I am looking for. I have a height of 1, or I have a leg of 1, and I still have this leg of 6. So now I need to do 1 squared plus 6 squared equals C squared again. So I get 1 plus 36 equals C squared. So 37, 37 equals C squared. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides again. Um, so 37, you take the square root of that, and you get about 6.1 is about the length of C. So now I have um, here, and this will be for here. I now have all of the measurements required to calculate the perimeter of this triangle. So I'll take my eraser and just kind of clear all this stuff out in here. I now have all the requirements for this. So I can take perimeter wise, I have that known length from here. Erase this really quick. The known perimeter length from here to here was seven, or the known uh, side length was seven. And then we calculated one of the sides to be 8.5. And then this, the third calculation we did, that side was 6.1. So if we add all of those together, we get 15.5. Um, add another 6.1 to get um, 21.6 units. So there's our perimeter. 
there's our area. Um, so in summary, guys, um, just remember um, that we're going to be using our um, perimeter formula. So the perimeter is equal to all sides added up. The area in this case is going to be equal to um, the base multiplied by the height divided by 2. And the, um, the base and the height need to make a 90 degree angle. Base and height uh, need to form a 90 degree angle. And then finally, the last thing is, uh, on a coordinate plane or just in general, um, you can definitely use Pythagorean theorem to find missing sides. So use a squared plus b squared equals c squared to find your missing sides. And that's it for today's video, guys. Um, thanks for watching. And uh, make sure you get this all in your notes. And I'll see you in the next one. See ya.